Jesus. And he comes to him by night. And he starts asking him these questions. First, he tries to, to go ahead and shine him up a little bit. Well, Jesus, we, we know that you're a man of God because nobody can do these things unless God be with them. Jesus already seen through all the smoke and all the fuss and, and everything else that he was trying to do. He says, you know what, Nick? Th this is what you need. I'm giving you what you need. But you need, to, you need to be able to hear it. You need to be able to hear it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So after he gets done here, he starts talking to his disciples and he says, you know, I, I, I must needs go to Samaria. So in John 4, verse 4, it says this, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave his, to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. He was sitting there on the well and it was about the sixth hour there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. There's that, there's that wall up, folks. There's that, par, there's that partition. You're not supposed to really be talking to me, Jesus. What, what are you doing? What are, what are you doing? So she, she, she comes at him like that. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that saith unto thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. So he, he changes the focus around, and, and he kind of ignores what she says, and he starts talking to her. He starts giving her a little bit of a revelation of, 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 of something in the spirit. Watch this now. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? She, she, she's trying to grasp it here, but she's not really getting it. So Jesus said, or I'm sorry, she says, Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. Talking about the Holy Ghost here, folks. Talking about spiritual things here. Trying to open her eyes a little bit. And, and we, need, we need to see, does she have the ears to hear the word of God coming at her? Jesus gives her a revelation here. Giving her little tidbits of revelation into life everlasting. Now, here's the invitation, folks. Jesus came to the city of Samaria, Sychar. Sits, sits down at a well, starts a conversation with a woman that came to draw out the water. Piques her interest with answers about life everlasting. Tells her to go to her husband. She answers him truthfully that she has no husband. Now, if it's one thing that God requires of us, is that we are all honest and humble with him at all times. Honest and humble. Psalm 51 and verse 6 says this. I love Psalm 51. If you get a chance today, read Psalm 51. If you get a chance. Psalm 51 verse 6 says this. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. Talking about the heart here. And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. So in the New Living Translation, it says this. But you desire honesty from the womb, from the heart. Teaching me wisdom from even there. God desires honesty from us. Folks, let's just, let's just get down to the nitty gritty. Everybody sins. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody does things that they shouldn't do. Do you know what? The Bible says that he's, he's faithful and just to forgive you. You, you. you confess your sins. You repent of them. And you turn around and you walk the other way. You start walking towards the light. You start walking towards the word of God. You start walking towards Jesus. You start asking God, lead me by your spirit. Let, let me feel a move of the spirit of God in my life. Direct me, God. Order my steps. Show me which way to go. Teach me what to say. Teach me what not to say. That's, that's my deal right there. Lord, show me the way. God, give me direction in my life. Counsel me, God. Let me hear from you, Jesus. We get down in prayer. We, we start to worship him. We get in the presence of God. We, we don't skip that, church. There's no going to heaven if you're not getting into his presence now. Can I just say that? Is that okay? You can't get in the presence of God down here. Let me tell you something. You're not going to be welcome up in heaven. I, I, I know that's kind of hard to say, and stuff, but, but hear, hear what I'm trying to tell you. 
you develop a relationship with God and, and you move in his spirit and you allow God to work in you. You allow God to work through you. You allow God to speak through you because you know what? You're a witness, folks. You're a witness. God needs you in the kingdom of God because the harvest is ripe out there right now and he needs laborers and you're it. Hello? Yeah. You're it. You're it. You're it. God needs you in this time and this age. The time is coming and it's short and swift. When he comes back and he takes his, you don't want to be left here. And, and I'm not trying to scare anybody. What my main focus is, is this. Our main focus is we need to go out into the world. We need to tell people about Jesus. We need to tell them about repentance and baptism in Jesus' name. And filling of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues. Why? Because it's necessary. And it's a requirement of salvation. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you desire honesty from the womb. Teach me wisdom from even there. Even though we mess up, if we come before God, God, I, I, I messed up. I messed up. We don't sit there and make excuses for it. You know you did wrong. Repent of it. You know you did wrong. Confess it before God and leave it right there at the altar. Don't sit there and pick it back up and run with it. Well, you know, I did such, I did such a bad thing yesterday. I don't know if I can pray today. I did such a bad thing to my, to my brother, you know, three months ago, and I don't think he's forgiven me. Let me tell you something. You should go to your brother and ask for forgiveness. You should go to your brother and say, you know what? I'm sorry. I was wrong. I did something wrong, and I'm sorry. I apologize. You should go to your sister and say, that if, they, if, if you've offended them or if they've offended you, forgive them. Forgive them. It's biblical, folks. It, it, you see Jesus on the cross when he was on the cross. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Hallelujah. It's biblical, folks. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So going back to the woman at the well, he says, go, go, and, go, get, go and go get your husband. And she says, sir, I don't, I don't I don't have a husband. He said, well, that, that's good. I'm glad that you told me the truth. You've had five husbands in the past. Yes, you've, you've, you've made mistakes before. And, and she could have lied to him, folks. She could have made excuses. She could have said, he's sick. He can't come because he's away with work. He's in a far country, but she didn't. She told him the truth. God requires honesty from us. Requires, even from the womb, if you've messed, I'm going to say it one more time. I feel the leading of the Spirit. If you've messed up, if you've messed up, you have to confess your sin. Turn away from it and walk the other way. But be honest with God. Lord, I messed up. I, I really did. I, 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 I don't know why I did it or, or, you know, I just gave in and I shouldn't have and I know I shouldn't have, but I did. But God, I'm confessing it. I'm coming before you, God, with a humble heart, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Did you know that when you come before God and you humble yourself, don't, come, don't try and come to God with pride thinking, oh, well, look at me, I'm somebody. Well, God, you know, I, I messed up. Uh, you're just going to have to forgive me. No, no, no. Let me tell you something. That, that's, it doesn't work. That's right, sister. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way, folks. You, know, you can't stand before a holy God, the judge of the entire world, and, 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 and have an attitude. Do you know a lot of times we have attitudes? We, we, somebody cuts us off in traffic or, or somebody, you know, you're at the 7-Eleven and, and, and the, 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 the cashier gives you a snooty attitude. Well, you know, who do you think you are? And, and, and we have that type of attitude and, and, and we get in that mindset. You know what? We need to forgive. And above all else, you need to forgive the person that you look at in the mirror. Hello? You need, to, you need to forgive the person that you look at in the mirror. It, it, it is a requirement because I'll tell you what, when you don't forgive, you put yourself in the place of God. Did you know that God is the judge of the whole earth? God is a judge, not you. Not you. I hate to, I, you know, I'm just telling it like it is, folks. We, we are not our own judge. When, when we go ahead and we take the place of judgment and we put ourselves in God's place, you know, you're, you're, it's not a smart thing to do. Amen. Amen. So, do you want to know why she actually told him the truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me, unto the Father, but by me. She saw something in him that she needed. She recognized truth was right before her. 
There was something different about him, though. He had mercy. He had mercy. You see, truth says you're guilty. You have done what you have done, and you deserve the punishment that goes with it. Mercy says, give them another chance. Give them another chance. Forgive them. Forgive them. Maybe they didn't understand what they were doing. Maybe they just, they, they just reacted, a knee-jerk reaction. Mercy says, forgive them. Let them have another chance. Forgive them and go on. Amen. Amen. When we are the example of Jesus to the world, let me ask you, how do people see Jesus in you? How do they see Jesus in you? Do they see the truth without any chance of mercy? Or, or do they see mercy just flowing out of you? Mercy, mercy. God, give us mercy. Lord, forgive us, God, of what we've done. And give us mercy, God. Teach us mercy, Lord. Help us to have mercy towards our brother. Amen. John 4, 39 through 42. I know I'm, I'm, I'm in the book of John here. I love the book of John as well. I'm reading from the, the Passion Translation. It says here, so there were many from the Samaritan village who came, I'm sorry, who became believers in Jesus because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. Then they begged Jesus to stay with them. So he stayed there for two days, resulting in many more coming to the faith in him because of his teachings. Then the Samaritan said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you told us, but now we've heard him ourselves and we are convinced that he really is the true savior of the world. Now, isn't it beautiful to hear the testimony of somebody who has Jesus change them in their life? But you know what's even better? Is your own personal testimony, is allowing God to work in your life, allowing God to do things in your life to you and through you. Amen? God wants to do a work in you, church. Let me say it again. God wants to do a work in you, church. God's trying to get this world ready. He's coming back, and he's coming back soon. And it's going to be in less than a blink of an eye. And it's going to be so quick, nobody's going to know what happened. It's just like, blink your eye, and then it, then it happened. Praise God. And he needs people out there telling them about him. Hallelujah. When we allow God to take care of us, or excuse me, to take us from where we are at in our life and give us a revelation of who he really is, then it's at that point we can start to change. Hallelujah. So the disciples of John, Nicodemus, and I'm closing, and the woman at the well, think about this for a second. All of them came to Jesus. They came to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They were all hungry. One thought that he was too good to be seen in public with Jesus. Another thought that they would never be good enough because of what she had done in her life. And two of them came just how they were. Just how they were. So we can get in the mindset sometimes, well, you know, I've, I've, got, I've got money or I've got, I've got all the things I need. I've got, I got a full belly. I've got, you know, gas in the, in the car. I've got a decent job. I've got food in the in the refrigerator, you know, I, I've got, you know, the rent's paid up for, you know, the next six months. I don't really, I don't really need to go to church. I don't, I don't really need to be around those people and stuff. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you what. It's that attitude. It's that pride. Did you know pride will kill a man? Pride will kill a man. Pride will make you think that you're bigger than what you really are. Pride will make you go up against a God that you can't see. Pride will kill a man quicker than a bullet will. Amen. And on the other hand, we have, we have somebody, we have a woman at the well who, who's messed up so much and her mind continues continually plays this over and over and over again in her in her life and and I've, I've been married to this man and, and I messed up so I, I you know I got a divorce and I went to this man and, and I, I married him and it didn't work out right and I got a divorce and and and, and, and then so on and so on and so on and, and so many things in her life she's messed up on and it rolls around in her head and she can't let it go and, and that sin will just sit there and roll around in her mind and she can't forgive pretty soon she can't forgive herself Herself. She can forgive everybody else, but she can't forgive herself. It is imperative that you understand what I'm about to say. 
you've got to be able to forgive yourself. You've got to be able to forgive yourself. That's one of the things that holds us up. You know, the devil will come to you and tell you that you're no good. You're, you're, you're this, you're that. You're, you've messed up so many times in your life. You're never going to be able to get to God. Nobody's going to want you. Even the people that you hang around don't want to be around you. And let me tell you something. God's saying, come, come, come and see. Come and see what I, what I have for you. Come and see what I have for your life. Come and see what I have for you. I have a place reserved in heaven just for you. I have a mansion for you in heaven. Hallelujah. 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 Why don't we all stand? Father, we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you, God, for the leading of your spirit, for the moving of your spirit in our life. We thank you, God. We ask, God, that you move on us now, God. Let the spirit of the almighty God minister unto us. Hallelujah. I want to open up these altars. If you need to pray, I want you to come pray. Don't ignore the spirit of God. I hear the Lord saying, come and see. You come and test me. You come and see what I can do for you in your life. You come and see the problems I get rid of in your life. You come and see how I bless you, child. Come and see how much I love you. Don't ignore the Spirit of God moving. Don't do it, church. Don't do it. Come and see. Come and see. I can hear the Spirit of God say, come and see. Oh, God,